I know you're a busy man getting ready for a title fight, so we won't waste any of your time, Mr. Ruthman. But I, I haven't seen you in a while, so I wanted to ask you, man. It's six months past your last title defense. Let me know, man. How crazy was that whole experience, man? You're talking about uh, on uh, your fights off, fights back on. We got a new opponent. We got to fly to Abu Dhabi now, and you you took it all in stride. I know that you know all the story was around Masvidal stepping in on short notice, right? But honestly, in retrospect. How crazy was that for you to go through all that? Oh, it was uh, it was it was challenging because uh, that was the first time that um, mentally, it was I was being kind of bumped around and thrown around because usually when I'm coming by the time I'm coming in the fight week, I'm mentally secure and and, and and know my routine. So with that being that 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 situation is like boom, I'm in Vegas, I'm already quarantined, and then the next morning they're like, oh hey. Yeah, your opponent tested positive. You can't fight. Okay, so it's off. So I'm like, all right. So I break quarantine. I leave quarantine. I go and eat. Um, of course, I'm in Vegas. I want the good food. So I'm just chowing down, eating all these steaks, eating whatever I could eat. Fights off. Next day, I'm catching my pl my flight back home. I'm halfway through that flight. I'm in Dallas, which it happens to be where I'm from originally. And so I'm in Dallas. As soon while I'm there, I'm like, you know what? I'm not full enough. Let me eat some more. So I stop at the little taco place there, get tacos in the airport. As soon as I'm sitting down, I'm opening the beer that I, first beer I would have been had in the first not in um, you know, maybe in the last eight months up until that point. I'm twisting the beer open and I get a call. It's a FaceTime from my manager. Ali's like, hey, um, where are you? <laughs> I'm like, I'm in Dallas. He's like, uh, hey, um, yeah, I think we uh, got a fight for you. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, um, the master dog agreed to fight you. I'm like, no. <laughs> Twist the cap back on the beer. <laughs> <laughs> Close it. And there was a... a, 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 a uh, girl sitting uh, next to me, I give her the beer and I push the, the plate of tacos over. I'm like, yeah, go ahead and have that. <laughs> I call my parents right then and there. I said, hey, mom, come pick me up. They come and pick me up. My bags were already checked in. They flew all the way to Florida. My parents picked me up. Immediately, we went straight to Target, got a scale, stepped on the scale, about 26 and pounds it over. <laughs> I was 196.5. Uh, so I call uh, one of the coaches that I work with while I was back there in Dallas, uh, Tony Cabello. Call him. I said, hey, Tony, I got to work out tonight. So he comes over. He mits me. I work out crazy that night. I probably got off about five pounds that night and um, said, okay, we were almost within striking range here. All right. I'm good to go. I go back to Vegas, quarantine all over again. And now instead of taking that normal flight, which would have been, what, eight days before to where you could try to get acclimated, now I was doing it in four. So the whole time I'm cutting weight and, and, and you know, it was, it was a crazy process to watch because all the headlines were, oh, Masvidal's taking this fight on six days notice, this, this, and that. And I'm thinking, I'm the one risking my title here. Well, this is all, yeah, this is all. That, me. Well, see, that's that's what I wondered is if like on, on on fight night especially, right? Like I wonder how you felt because I man, I, I know how you like to prepare and I know how professional you are, right? This this isn't something you normally do, right? Something wild like this. And so when I thought about it, and I don't want to minimize, you know, what Masvidal did. Obviously, he brought a lot of attention and all that, but I feel like to him, it's kind of a no-lose situation, right? Like, he comes in there and shocks the world. Amazing. He loses, and, well, I stepped in on a week's notice. What did you expect? Meanwhile, you, I mean, you're the champ. You're the guy that's building this legacy. So I wonder, that night, was there, like, a special kind of nerve, a special kind of feel, like, what have I, what have I done here? Have I, have I made a horrible decision? Um, it, it was, uh, for the first time in my, in my career. And I think, um, a big part of that, a big reason that was, is because of the, just the circumstances that I was dealing with having to quarantine and having to fly all the way across the world. And as soon as you get there, you're quarantined the whole time for 48 hours. Pretty much the day that we get let out is a day that we have to cut weight, uh, and, um, and go way in. And so 
all dealing with all of that, not being able to sleep or acclimate. And when you're trying to sleep, 4 a.m. in the morning, the race cars are racing through the hotel, loud as, as, as you know, as anything. And so I had I couldn't sleep. Basically, I didn't sleep the four days that I was there and preparing for this fight. So with all those circumstances going on and then continuously hearing, oh, he's taking this fight on six days. Notice this, this and that. At some point, it kind of got to me mentally. I'm like, whoa, what, am I am I am I ready for this? Did I make Did I make the right decision here? You know, what if, what if he shocks the world? What if he goes out here and and, and what was he saying? He would uh, he would uh, he would baptize me. What if he what if he baptizes me? I'm I'm, I'm blessed already. Why do I need to be baptized? And you know, all these crazy thoughts go through my mind. But of course, you know, me being mentally strong, I'm like, man, get out of here. You know this guy. You can beat this guy. You know, half 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 asleep. You can beat this guy. So at some point, I just basically had to collect myself. And, and, and put all that to the side going and, and, and take care of business and, and hats off to him for stepping up and, and taking that fight and allowing me to uh, make a living. Yeah, no doubt. And he came out throwing hard to start with, but you, you got the dominant victory ultimately. Uh, been about six months from then, so uh, let me know what's been going on. I know you went and uh, you got a little bit of treatment down in Columbia and, and that sort of thing. So, I mean, with six months, was it, were there like things you needed to, to let heal up? I know you've had some injuries over time, or was this just kind of the way the schedule worked out to get back down to business? Um, it's kind of how the schedule worked because it's been kind of funky with all the COVID situations things closing down, things opening back up a little bit and then close it back down, you know, with all of that going on, it's been kind of hectic, but, uh, yeah, of course, uh, I had some things going on. So I had to, uh, get somewhere to get some treatment, uh, a shout out to uh, bio accelerator down there in, uh, in Columbia, they're a great company. Um, I went out there and got some treatment and I came back and, and, and trying to let the body heal at that time. And then, you know, it just, this seems to be the only time that it really came into place and it worked out, you know, but, uh, you know, I'm thankful. I'm grateful that it's, it's, it's time to get back in there and, and to make a living. It's uh it's a good fight too. So I wanted to ask you, I mean, obviously, you know, you had already gotten ready for Gilbert Burns. Now you're getting ready for him again. Um, is this, I mean, are you excited about this? Like, is this, is this the best fight for you? The most exciting fight for you? Or were there other fights out there and, you know, you just kind of felt obligated. Is, is, is what are you, are you, are you, are you keyed up for this one? I guess I should say. I mean, there, there's at this moment, there, there's a couple of guys that could say, you know, yeah, you know, I want to fight that, you know, I, I want to fight him. And, you know, granted I could just, you know, say yes. You know, I mean, let's be honest. Uh, Leon Edwards, I think has earned uh, a fight with me, you know, doing what he's done since he fought me. So I think he warrants a fight. Uh, the Covington fight, of course, um, it was a great fight. Everybody wants to see that fight again. Um, you know, and he went out there and got a victory. So, you know, he can kind of try to stay the claim for for the fight. And, of course, uh, Gilbert, you know, he, he did defeat uh, Woodley. And he seemed to be the right man at the at the right place, at the right he's the right guy at the right place at the right time. So, you know, the uh, you know, the UFC felt that, you know, they wanted to go with him. And so I said, okay, you know, that's the thing that I do. I don't I don't care who it is. Tell me who and tell me when, and I go out there and get my check. I like it, man. Well, you know, as a fight fan, I, I'll be honest, I am really excited about this matchup, man. And uh, so I guess I kind of want to ask you, I mean, I know you want to give the guy too many props. You got to fight him here in a little bit, but put put the analyst hat on, you know what I mean? Put the put the, the, the ESPN, the Titan FC analyst hat on. Uh, man, tell me, I mean, is, is this the toughest stylistic matchup? I mean, I, I, there's bigger names, of course, and you rattled off some fights that need to happen. But, you know, I look at his power. I look at his jujitsu. You know, and, and I think that, man, maybe this is the most challenging stylistic fight for you in the division. Is that is that accurate? I mean, you, you know him pretty well. So is that accurate or, or not? Um, I mean, it's tough to say because um, I've um, – th there's there's been other guys before that they were, oh, this is tough stylistic matchup. These guys are tough. These guys are this. These guys are that. You know, but I think what sets me apart from everybody else is how I'm able to use my mind and my fight IQ in fights. Um, and that, that, that's what I think sets me apart. But this one is a difficult one. Yes, obviously, Gilbert is the biggest, baddest dude in the division right now, or else he wouldn't be fighting me. And so um, I, I, I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be a good one. You know, if he if he prepared well and he came with his A game, then it could be a great fight. But if he didn't, then, uh, of course, it would be one sided domination like it always is with me.
Yeah, no question. You've had some great results. Uh, getting ready in Colorado again. Uh, I did want to ask you about that. Um, you know, the first time you went out there, I, I thought maybe it was partially just because you guys didn't want to be in the same camp. I mean, was that was that what it was all about, or was it, did it just make it an easy time to, to move? What what was the whole move to Colorado about, and, and, and how are you enjoying it out there? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was just time. You know, I got to a point in my career to where I wanted more attention. I needed uh, I needed more of a, a you know personal personalized uh, treatment. You know, as far as pre preparation for my fights, and um, of course it, that's that's tough to do when you're on a team of 40, 50 guys, and the coaches have to travel every other week to corner you know corner guys. You know, it makes it, it makes it tougher to be able to get that done. So, I. Um, I needed the, the you know the, the specialized attention, and I I, I kind of narrowed it down to the guys that I um, the coaches that I felt were going to be able to do that, and the coaches that I felt that I would mesh with well. And uh, you know, ultimately, I found uh, found Trevor Whitman, and um, you know, the rest is history. No doubt, uh, obviously a fantastic coach. And uh, did, I, did I see today on social media you brought Eddie Alvarez out there? He's been helping you get ready a little bit. Uh, of course, me and Eddie have a long history. Eddie's one of the guys that I, I I've looked up to, you know, in, 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 my, <laughs> in my uh, you know, all throughout my career and on my journey to to where I am now. Um, so, you know, I make this uh, statement to where I say I, I've been classically trained, and what I mean by that is, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be around some of the legends of the sport. I mean, being around uh, Rashad Evans, you know actually learning from him and, and picking up certain tips guys like eddie alvarez and george santiago and jay-z cavacante you know i truly believe i was blessed and i was classically trained and, and you know and being able to learn from all of these guys now that eddie's out of the room do you want to say something different or is it, you stick with that okay <laughs> <laughs> And, and by the way, did I see you got your daughter as your strength and conditioning coach? I saw y'all were working the battle ropes together. Is, is she is she leading the strength and conditioning? Um, you know, certain time from, from time to time again, I'll, I'll have her leave the workout. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it, it's crazy how – because she's been going to the gym with me ever since she was about six months old. And so uh, – it was crazy. Certain times I'll bring her in the gym and she'll, she'll like scream out stuff like, daddy, you have to do this and then do the knee and do this and do that. <laughs> I, I, there's a, there's a post on my Instagram of her actually coaching me through. She's standing in the air like this watching me. And she's like, that's good. That's good. Daddy. Good. Daddy. Use the knee, use the knee. And she's like telling me what to do. So, you know, it, it's, it's been an amazing journey. And, uh, um, obviously being a parent is, uh, is is amazing and something that that kind of changes my perspective on the sport it's the best man it's the best all right so you know you talked about your mindset and and how mentally tough you are but i want to ask you kind of what your mindset is in this stage of your career like it's it's been fun watching your rise and i think in the beginning you know you kind of had a chip on your shoulder you had to prove to the world i'm the guy I say i am y'all are doubting me you know but i'm i'm that guy but now i mean look at what you've done man mazidal covington woodley rda Maya, I mean, there's no doubt anymore, right? Like, you know, nobody can say, does this guy belong? You belong. So so what's the mindset now, man? Are you are you thinking about like legacy and, and all time records and, and where you stand in the in the, the pantheon of history or whatever? I mean, what what drives you? Because I, I can't imagine you got that chip on your shoulder anymore. Um, it's funny actually. Um no, I still got that chip on my shoulder. It's actually even almost even bigger now. Um, and, and, and it's because um, even with all of that, you know, for some reason, people still don't want to give you the respect that you deserve because uh, of maybe their personal preference, you know. And um, so but it is what it is. That chip is still on my shoulder because when I got into this, it wasn't for, OK, legacy it wasn't for fame or money or anything of that nature. It was just simply to compete and prove that I am the best, that I can be the best at my time. And so that was that was my mindset, and I steal my mindset. You know, that's the biggest thing that drives me is competition. So as long as there's competition out there, and as long as I'm, and that's the biggest thing, I'm, I have to be honest with myself. So as long as I'm honest with myself and still capable and able to do it, I want to be the best. And so that chip is still heavy on my shoulder. 
I like it, man. I like it. So uh, clearly, man, you're, you know, you're single focused right now. I mean, you're, you're, you had to focus on Gilbert Burns, but uh, I know you look at big picture. I know your manager, Ali, obviously looks at big picture. I mean, do you have plans past this? I mean, you rattled off some things that I think make sense as well, right? Like Leon Edwards, man. Poor Leon Edwards, man. He's had a rough year, and I know he'd love that rematch with you. Covington, come on, man. Everybody loves a grudge match. Like, we'd all like to see that. You know that'd be a big money fight. I could, Look, I could even say – uh, Masvidal, you know, Masvidal can't say, hey, I didn't get a full camp. Give me that full camp. And he's one of the biggest stars in the sport right now. And, of course, you got the new boogeyman, right, the Hamzat Shemaev hype train. I mean, he could unseat it. So, I mean, are, are any of those names, like like I said, I know you're not looking past it. I don't want to set up anything like that. But do you have plans of what, like, really appeals to you or makes sense with, with a big win here? Um, You know, I uh, know. I mean, um, of course, those all those are all in the picture. You know, but those guys, none of them have really broke out to where it's like, this guy is next for you. You know, so they're all kind of in that thick, thick and thin uh, uh, in that that picture to where they're basically trying to make themselves the next guy up. And so right now, you know, my focus is on Gilbert Burns. Gilbert has, uh, you know, he has stated that this is a fight that he wants. He believes that he is that guy. So my, my focus is on him, um, you know. And at this point, I, I, I see nothing past, you know, getting the job done against him. But, you know, besides that, after that, there's really right now, there's really no one that really stands out. I mean, I know Covington and, and, and Masvidal are kind of pitted together to where, you know, let's say somebody goes out there and shows me something. Someone does something spectacular, then, hey, that guy jumps the line. That guy could be the next guy. Or, or Edwards and, and, and Chimaya, you know, someone does something spectacular there, they could be the next guy. So, you know, of course I'm paying attention, but right now no one really stands out that they're the next guy. Yeah. It's a nice position to be in as champion, right? You don't have to carve oh. out the path. They got to come to you, right? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Because that was the thing that I, that I had a problem with for years and years and years is I'm trying to make my way up and all these guys all, no, I don't want to fight him because it's a, it's a very, very high risk and low reward. But now that I'm in the position, I don't need to call guys out. You guys all have to come to me because I have what you guys think you want. I love it. Now it's high risk and high reward, right? Now the, now the reward is there. No more excuses. Well, cool, man. Well, listen, uh, you've been great with your time as always, man. I know you're trying to dial in. I'll let you get to your rest and relaxation. So uh, last, last question for me, man. I mean, we've seen you in some wars recently, but we've also seen you in some absolute one-sided destructions, man. So I, I know you're prepared for, for all outcomes, but – I mean, you you know Gilbert, right? I mean, you guys are very, very familiar with each other. So when you play this thing out in your head, what do you see? I mean, is this are you getting yourself ready for a, a back and forth battle that, that you have to you know gut through, or do you know something that we don't and uh, and you think you can get him out of there? Yeah, I mean, um, that's the, that's that's my mo is is um, I I am I am like I said, my mind is better than all these guys in the division right now. To where you know it, it depends on him. You know, they, those guys dictate how this is going to go. If they've done the homework the appropriate way and they come prepared, then, you know, they can, might be able to pull out a different fight out of me. Like you saw in the Covington fight. He came prepared and he pulled out that type of fight on me. But if you don't come prepared, it's going to be a one-sided. Like every last one of my fights, it's going to be a one-sided beating. So, you know, I'll leave that up to him. You know, we haven't trained together in quite some time, so... You know, I've, I've added some new wrinkles to my game that I'm pretty sure they don't see coming. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. But, you know, I'm sitting at the top and I like it because, you know, I guess you can call it what the green panty night. When you fight me, they make the most money. You know, Masvidal made the most money. Covington, they make the most money when they fight me and especially this guy. So it doesn't matter. It's green panty night when they fight me. That's what they, they should be looking forward to. I love it. I love it. Well, Champ, I appreciate the time. Obviously, looking forward to you get out here in Vegas and uh, wish you the best in the last couple of days of camp. All right. Thank you, John. I appreciate it.